Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson in Learn Kurdish Language. It's our lesson 17. And in this lesson, as it's requested by one of my viewers, I'm going to talk about or explain comparative and superlative in Kurdish language. Uh, well, yeah, and I want to tell you that for, for our next lesson in lesson 18, it's going to be a very, very important lesson. Very important lesson. Uh, because I'm going to talk about conjugations and endings in Kurdish. So uh, I, I believe it's going to be a long lesson, you know, uh, but it's going to be very important. And it's going to be a very uh, good, uh, you know, foundation for your Kurdish language to take, to take it into another step. Because I think on YouTube there is not any videos that explain that. And it's a very important topic. Uh, and basically, yeah, so be wait for it. And another, and, uh, another one of my viewers, another one of my viewers asked me to make uh, uh, a lesson about kitchens and actions uh, in, in verbs and words that are related to the kitchen. Well, I'm going to do that, uh, but after the next lesson. Uh, actually, I had to do verb endings and conjugations a long time ago, but I, I also needed to revise. Uh, some Kurdish grammar books to 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 know about uh, grammatical terms and also to remember because you know as a native speaker when I speak I don't think about conjugations and etc. Uh, but we had studied Kurdish grammar at school as well, so we studied Kurdish language and grammar from the first year at uh, at school. Actually, not first year, but from the from the second grade till. 12th grade, we studied Kurdish grammar, but we didn't really understand it and didn't really care of care about it because we we all we were native speakers, so we didn't want it to know more about it. But anyway, I'm going to talk about that. So our next lesson is very important, so please stay tuned for it. And I'm trying to make it as fast as possible. Okay, in in this lesson, I'm going to talk about comparative and superlative. Now, in every language, adjectives are uh, are having three degrees. So, what is use use? Uh, how can we use superlative and comparative? Well, basically, comparative is from its name, from its term that you compare between two uh, people or two objects, and of course, you use uh, an adjective between them that they share the same adjective, but one of them probably uh, better or or not or you know the adjective can can show this compare you know you make this comparison to see uh, to see the difference between them they share the same uh, adjective but there is a difference between them somehow you will see in the more examples and then we have superlative degree uh, which is basically something is uh, it, you know in the um, for example, we say Nile is the longest river in the world, for example. So from all the rivers in the world, Nile is the longest, for example. So uh, you, you some an adjective of an object or the description of an object, it's on top of other ones. When, when, when I say on top, it doesn't mean it's supposed to be good or a positive meaning or a positive connotation of an adjective. No, it can be negative as well, but will be on the top of other adjectives. Well, in Kurdish language, there are three degrees. You know, in, in almost every language, there are three degrees. Well, in some languages, for example, there is comparative superlative or absolute superlative. But in most of the languages, uh, languages around the world, there are uh, these three types of degrees. So these three types, not of adjectives, but these three types of degrees of adjectives. So let's see. Positive degree. Okay, I'm using English terminology now because in Kurdish we are kind of using a different terminology and I will explain that in a minute. Uh, positive degree, uh, and I will talk about it here because we need to talk about each of them. And by the way, I, I want to tell you something else I forgot to tell you in the intro, uh, that 
this lesson by itself is short because the rules of com comparative degree and the rule of uh, sorry superlative degree are very easy. So you don't need to be worried that much. So I prepared, you know, just to make the lesson more benefit, I pre prepared a list of adjectives, of 50 adjectives. So I'm going to talk about each one of these words. Um, actually, I need to talk about them. I need to pronounce it for you and also tell you what is the difference between that because some of the words are having, a, like some of adjectives are having more than one word, more than one different one term, so I need, I really need to explain it. So our lesson in the list of adjectives, our grammatical lesson will be finished here. So if you are, if you, if you are not willing to improve more in Kurdish, you just need to know about the com comparison superlative. So you don't need to come to the adjectives list. But adjectives list is really good to practice your comparative and superlative as well. I just wanted to let you know that to make you more interested in the lesson. Okay. Then uh, we have comparative, uh, yeah, I talked about superlative as well. So let's say these terms in Kurdish. So the Kurdish term for positive degree is pleychaspal. Basically, degree in Kurdish is ple. So this, how in degree, you know, used for temperature in English, ple is also used uh, for, uh, for, lit for temperature, not literature, oh my god. Uh, comparative degree, in Kurdish we say play barawurt, it's exactly the same as English. Comparison means barawurt, kirdin in Kurdish. Play barawurt means comparative degree. Uh, then we have superlative degree. Superlative degree in Kurdish we say play bala. Basically bala means height or tall, some, something high. So play bala means uh, high degree. Okay, so high or tall means, oh my god, uh, means uh, superlative degree, okay? Normal, why did I put normal? I had to delete this, but anyway, uh, here I didn't know what to write, so because, you know, play chess pow, chess pow basically means a stable, or means normal. Uh, actually, chess pow doesn't mean normal. But you couldn't call it play asai, means the degree, the normal degree of an adjective. But anyway, chess pow basically means stable, something is stable, doesn't move. Uh, or you can you can use normal for it. In Kurdish for normal, we also say normal, but the Kurdish word would be asai. Asai means normal. Okay. Uh, positive state of an adjective. So let's take them. First, we take this, then comparative, then superlative. So positive state of an adjective, they do not take any inflections. So basically, you don't you don't add any suffix or affix, and um, uh, the adjectives is in its. Uh, oh, by the way, this is called ko in Kurdish. Ko. It's a Kurdish animal, and actually, it's a sign of Kurdish culture as well. So, um, in English, ko is partridge. Okay, let's come back here. Uh, so, the adjective would be in its uh, form, in its base form, it's it, in its infinitive form. For example, mrovi bash khoshavista. Mrov, mrov means... Uh, human, not person. It means human. E is called Amrazi Danapal. Basically, it's suffix we added because we want to combine it with the adjective. So, good person, Mrovi Bash. Or good human, a good human, Mrovi Bash. Khoshevista means is beloved. Someone, the good man is beloved. You know, good person is beloved. So, not good man, good human is beloved, or good person is beloved. So, mrovi bash, khoshavista. If you see bash means good, it, it is in its normal state. It's in this uh, normal uh, or in its positive state. Positive doesn't mean like it must be, it must have a positive connotation or positive meaning, okay? So, yeah. Here, always be gentle, you know, I didn't find any picture, so that's why I put this. Always be gentle, honest, honorable, loving man. 
Uh, well, I don't agree with every point here. Like, you don't need to be always gentle. If you are a man and listening to me, you don't need always to be gentle. Okay, in some situations you need to be tough. Yeah, okay, I'm joking. And I know not to be tough, but sometimes you need to be stone hearted. And then honest, uh, <laughs> okay, I, I cannot say anything about that. Honorable, yeah, sure. Loving man, well. I told you, I mean, sometimes you need to be stone hearted. So. Yeah, I mean, this always uh, changes to sometimes. Yeah, okay, so let's come here. Kurdistan, Kurdistan, Wallata, Hijuana basically means Kurdistan is a nice country. Wallata, Hijuana means uh, it is a nice country. This is verb to be here. Uh, Wallata, Hijuana means a nice country. If you just say Wallata, Hijuana, like just boom, without this uh, at the end, it means it's a nice country. Sorry, Wulati Kijuan means a, ni a nice country. But if I add Joanna, means it's a nice country. So here in this case, I can omit uh, this. And Joanna actually uh, is also an ending for third person. So yeah, but this ending, it, it is verb to be. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Wulat. Wulat means country. Ek means, you know, it's, uh, I talked about it a lot in my previous videos, that ek is suffix for indefinite noun. And this e you added, this is amrazi danapal, you add it to combine it with the adjective. Okay. And this e is also can be possessive e as well, uh, in certain cases. Yeah. But anyway, we'll I'll talk about that later. And uh, Juan means nice or beautiful. Juan means beautiful, but it can also mean nice. Uh, and then you add the ending for third person, and uh, it's also verb to be. Let's go to another slide. We have comparative. Comparative, it's berawurt kari in Kurdish. Not berawurt kari, it's berawurt kari. Uh, before that, let me write down things in Kurdish here. Rovi, Bash, Oshavista. Okay. The second sentence Kurdistan, Wati, Hijuana. This is how you write it in. Kurdish script or Sorani script. Uh, okay. Then we have comparative degree or Barawurt Kari in Kurdish. You can say Barawurt Kari or play Barawurt. Barawurt Kari means uh, comparative, comparing. Barawurt Kirdin. Barawurt Kirdin is also a verb. It is verb Barawurt Kirdin means to compare. But it's also part participle, so just like uh, present participle in English. So, but I would then can also be can be used as a noun as well as a partic as participle as non finite verb. To make comparative on an adject uh, of an of an adjective, you add the suffix tir. So this tir you add the suffix to the object, and that's it. But we need we have uh, a note, okay? But notice that preposition of la, la, sorry, not la, I, I thought it's Vietnamese, because in Vietnamese la, with the tone when it comes la, means uh, verb to be. But anyway, yeah, so this is la. Uh, so we also add the preposition la, uh, is also added to the, I mean, you add you add it after the, the verb. This preposition in this, in a sentence like this, in a comparative sentence like this, it means then. As in English. Uh, basically, this concept has been talked about in the Kurdish Sorani grammar, the book that I put a uh, link in the description a lot of times in some of my videos. Uh, but the book didn't talk about this concept, which is I'm going to talk about it. Anyway, uh, Karwan is better than Kamaran. Basically, Karwan and Kamaran is Kurdish word, it's Kurdish names. Karwan means, it came from kar, and the suffix wan, which means someone who's working or good at work. Uh, kameran, 
كاميران uh, basically means uh, he the a happy person. If I say ka Karwan is better than Cameron, okay, just this sentence like not Cam Karwan is better than Cameron in working or something like that. Let's not make that sentence more complex, but only the concept of comparative. Karwan is better than Cameron. Um, uh, you say Karwan. Bashtra. If you remember here, we had bash, which means good. How can we say better here to make it to, to make it uh, comparative degree? Look, we add what? We add tir. But this a, uh, this a is actually the third person ending. Uh, uh, we, it's the third person ending, okay? And verb to be, I think as well. I don't think it's verb to be, but it's uh, ending. So karwan bashtra la kamera. La means than. You need to add this la. Otherwise, you cannot say karwan bashtra kamera. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So you need to add this la as well. This la actually it's a preposition. Uh, in in the Surani grammar book, it says it's comparison position preposition. Well, it can be used as a comparison preposition, but uh, La can also mean other things, can mean in, on, uh, above, etc. So uh, it can be preposition of time, it can be preposition of place. So it has a lot of uses in Kurdish language, okay, this preposition. But here in a comparative sentence like this, it means that. Anyway, Karwan, Bashtra, La Kamara. Well, you can omit Karwan, but I. Uh, in this sentence, it will be like if I just say Bashtra la camera, it, it doesn't make sense like that. I mean, it makes sense, but you know, you need to have shared knowledge in this point. For example, uh, for example, my friend says, Karan Bashtra la camera. And he says, Wanya Kamo means, isn't, is, you know, Karan is better than camera, isn't it, Kamo? And I would say, Ah, Bashtra la camera. So I say, Oh, oh yeah. Uh, better than camera, you know, like this. So depending on the context, you can omit Karwan, but the thing is, um, it's better to not uh, omit it in, in this sentence. In this sentence, I think. Uh, so we added tir, but this uh, it refers to Karwan. Okay, so Karwan bashtra la camera. Usually, when you make comparison, uh, it's third person. What if I say I am better than camera? At this point, you add the uh, min. I talked about it in second lesson when I talk about Kurdish pronouns, but you have to change the ending into m min bashtrim la camera. Look, the ending changes depending on the person. If I if I change it to you, to to bashtri la camera, or I can say to bashtrit la camera, and you add this. Uh, ending okay. Oh, Bashtra la camera. Oh, is the third person as well. So let's write Karwan again. Yeah, so this is how the ending will change according to the person. Okay, and the endings is added. Someone asked, oh, Can I, uh, on what uh, element of the sentence I can add the endings? Well, the endings. It's a little bit complex because you can add them into adjectives, uh, to verbs, to object, etc. Depending on the sentence and the construction you make. And we will talk about all of that in next lesson. Halgrud Mountain is higher than Pira Magrun. Pira Magrun is uh, a mountain in near Slemani, uh, near Slemania in, Kurdish, in Kurdistan, in northern Kurdistan. Sorry, southern Kurdistan, like Iraqi Kurdistan. Halgurd is the highest mountain. I, I think it's in the eastern of Kurdistan. I'm not sure where is Halgurd is really, but it's the highest mountain in Kurdistan. It's 3,600 something meters high. So, Chia Halgurd Barastra La Piramagrun. Chia means mountain. There is another word for mountain, which is Shah. But Chia means mountain, and it's also a, Kurdish, a common Kurdish name. E, it's Amrazi Danapal, we added to modify Halgurt. Um, actually, 
No, actually, I think chia <laughs> to modify chia uh, to be modified. We add the c to be to to make chia to be modified by halgurt. So anyway, chia halgurt. Um, uh, no, no, no. Oh my God, I made a mistake. Uh, Halgurt is supposed to be modified because it's the head now. Anyway, Chiai Halgurt Barestra Baris means okay. Baris is uh, high or tall. High or tall. Actually, it means high. You add tir and you add a. Guess why? Because it's third person and you need to add ending of the third person, but it's the la, it's the preposition uh, of compar comparison, la piramagrun. I also could say la chiai piramagrun, I mean, chiai how good barestre la chiai piramagrun, how good mountain is higher than piramagrun mountain. But because you, you said, that you, we, we already know Piramagrun is Chia, so we don't need to say it. We, we even can omit Chia because uh, a Kurdish person already knows how good is a name of a Kurdish mountain. So let me uh, write the things in Kurdish and then we're going to have uh, a, a note. Okay. Arwan. Oh, sorry, what happened? Karwan, Bashtra. Sometimes they say Karwan Bashtriaka. So they add, um, they also add, you know, I don't know. They add the Tir, basically, let me explain this concept as well. Some people speak like that or in some Kurdish accents, in some Kurdish people, they speak like that, let me tell you. And it's also true, there is not uh, wrong in Kurdish sense. So Karwan Bashtra, they add Tir is the suffix of comparative, okay? Comparison. Then they add ek. Ek, I explained it a lot of time. This, uh, it, it is indefinite to make indefinite na. To, basically, it's similar to add a or an in English, indefinite articles. Then you add a, which is uh, verb to be or the ending you add because of the third person. So, bashtreka. Karwan bashtreka la kamera. You also can say that. Yeah. Uh, especially in Slimani accent, I hear it a lot like that. Uh, I also use it sometimes. Barestreka. Uh, you also can say that. Chiai how good barestreka. Okay, let's, uh, let me write in Kurdish fast because, yeah. Karwan bashtra la kamera. Okay. Chiai. All good. Barestra la Pira Maglun. Yeah, Pira Maglun is another. Always when I go to Slimani, I see it on, on, on the way. Uh, and I don't know, I think there was a story about, about it or something like that, but uh, I think it was about one of the Kurdish. I don't know, wisdom, wisdom man or something like that. Anyway, note alert. Okay, I added this note because uh, actually probably it's not a part of grammar, but Kurdish people, they also speak like that. That's why I put this note. Sometimes you can say, uh, you can you can say or construct a sentence like that. Look, all good mountain is higher than pyramid room. In Kurdish, you also can say, in English is the same. Uh, but you can say Chai Halgurt Barstra Waklet Piramagrun or Chai Halgurt Barstra Waklet Chiai Piramagrun. I think this it will be more nicer to say. Basically means um, Halgurt Mountain is higher Wakla Chiai Piramagrun or you can say Waklaway 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 Piramagrun. But no, but you don't need to make it more complicated because sometimes even me as a Kurdish native speaker, I may make a mistake here. But Chia Halgurt Barstra Wakla Chia Piramagrun. You just add Wakla. Basically, Wak. What does Wak mean? Wak means, uh, for example, or it means uh, 
similar, to be similar, or it means as in English, as, or as if, okay, or as if. It can mean several things, actually. Uh, but what can means like, or something is like something else, uh, or similar, okay, can mean these things. So you can add it. Uh, yeah. It can mean rather than in the uh, construction above. So, yeah, basically it means rather than. So, uh, yeah. For example, you say I prefer drinking rather than something. It's not really, it's kind of comparative, you know. Uh, so, chai, how good, yeah, it can be translated to this one. Okay, our last point is super superlative, but it's not the last slide because I'm going. I'm having a list of adjectives as well. But anyway, superlative in Kurdish we say play bala. Uh, so play bala basically means the high degree. Uh, superlative is made by adding suffix trin. So basically you have tir, the same as uh, comparative, but you add in, so it's it's became trin. Okay. Himalaya, Himalaya. If you don't know about Himalaya, it's the it's the highest peak in the world. So, uh, um, if you don't know, I I think it's in Tibetan area, in Tibet. I think. Uh, okay, I uh, I forgot. I think it's in Tibet. Uh, yeah, I'm sure about that. And I'm going to put link in the description, maybe Wikipedia link that you can read about Himalaya. It's not a Kurdish, uh, it, it's not related to Kurdish, but we love mountains and it's also uh, an information uh, for you. Mm -hmm. You need to uh, make your knowledge be stronger and better. Anyway, Himalaya is the highest peak in the world. Himalaya, Barestrin, Lutke, Jihan. Okay. Barestrin means highest. The highest. Lutka means peak, peak of the mountain or peak. This Lutka is also used, uh, for example, uh, Genève Conference. You can say Lutke Genève. Anyway, it's a political thing. With okay, you know, just Lutka means peak. Okay, so for example, we say my anger reached its peak. Okay, in Kurdish we say min toreim gashtota Lutka, means my anger. You know, it's reached the peak. Uh, so, yeah. But anyway, Lutke means uh, peak or peak of the mountain. E is Amrazita Nepal, as usual. Uh, Jihan, look. Jihan means world. Jihan means world. Ah, it's, it refers back to Himalaya. So I can omit Himalaya according to the context. Like, uh, if you have shared knowledge about what are you talking about, you can omit Himalaya. So, for example, someone says, uh, Kamo, do you know that Himalaya is uh, the highest uh, peak of the world? And I would say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is the highest peak of the world. So I would say, it's a Kamo to Zanit Himalaya Barstrin Lutke Jihana. Uh, and I would say, oh, uh, bala bala, barestrin uh, lutkeziana, means, oh yeah, yeah it's uh, the highest uh, peak in the world. So yeah, Himalaya barestrin lutkeziana. This uh, it, it's we added because of third person, or because of uh, Himalaya, which is in third person state. So yeah, and it's also verb to be. It's it is verb to be. The most beautiful girl, uh, in Kurdish, all the adjectives are uh, regular. There is no irregular. Well, I think there is. At certain points, there is. Uh, but almost every single adjective in Kurdish is uh, regular. So you don't need to be afraid. Anyway, the most beautiful girl, you would say, Joan Terim. As you see, uh, at the first slide I showed you that Joan is the in its infinitive form or in its base form. Then you add the suffix trin, 
which is a suffix we added to make superlative in Kurdish. And then you use the word for kitsch, which means girl. Okay, then we go to the best person. Best, uh, it's good, but in its superlative degree. So if you remember from the first slide, no first slide, the second slide, I showed you bash, which is in its in it, uh, infinitive form, which means good. And this is how you write it in its positive form. And you add tirin, bash tirin, which means the best. Kes means person. Okay, bash tirin kes means the best person. Uh, okay, so that's all. Now, we finished our grammatical point here, but let's get into some adjectives here. Uh, these adjectives, I think they are important if you know about them. And later, I'm going to give you some sentences so you can practice. And then we are going to the list of adjectives, which, which I try to be a little bit fast in explaining them. Okay, so much or many, then in English, comparative form is more than most. In Kurdish, you can say zia. Zia means much or many. Actually, zia means uh, something is a little bit, a, a bit more. Okay. Anyway, zia, ziatir, ziatrin. Zor, zortir, zortirin. Mm -hmm. Little, kem, kemtir, kemtirin. I think little is, uh, there's another word for it in English, least, uh, less, less, and least. Uh, well or good, bash, better, bashter, best, bashterin. It's not nashter, oh my god, what, 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 what the fuck did I do? Okay, okay, so you get the, the point here. These three adjectives, I think it's good to know. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I remember something. Like sometimes the Kurdish people would would say bashtrin tir means the best. Or I don't know. I mean bashtrin it already has superlative, but then we add another suffix of uh, we add another suffix of uh, of comparative. So basically, I think this is comparative superlative. A bashtrin trin. I mean, at some some point you can see these things, but anyway, uh, I don't talk about it because I may not be correct. But we say that. I mean, we do say that. Uh, but anyway, just as a fact, you, you you don't need to make it more complicated for now. Uh, it is better. It is better means obastra. Yeah, it is better obastra. Uh, it is the best obastrina. Obastrina. The most delicious food, khoshtrin khwarden. Okay, khoshtrin khwarden, the most beautiful food. You don't, in, in Kurdish um, comparison and superlative, you don't need to add uh, articles, okay? Biggest spaceship, gawretrin kashti asmani. Kashti asmani means spaceship. Uh, kashti, e is not danapal here, by the way. Okay, but you add Danapal as well, but because it's already E at the end, so, you know, it's pronounced the same way as it is pronounced. So, Kashti means uh, ship, okay, Kashti means ship. Uh, we have another word, Papor, but Papor is a very big ship, like, for example, Titanic was Papor, okay. Uh, anyway, Goret in Kashti Asmani. Kashti means, uh, means, uh, Come on, man. Uh, ship. And Asman, okay, Asman uh, means, uh, Asman means uh, sky, and you add E at the end as well. I don't know, the, this E you added like Asmani means something from sky. So, Kashti Asmani means spaceship. Gauratin Kashti Asmani means biggest, the biggest spaceship, the biggest spaceship. The nicest story, you say Joan Trin Chirok. Joan Trin Chirok. Chirok means story in Kurdish. Kurta Chirok. Kurta Chirok. And I will, I will talk about Kurt as well. Kurt. 
the word kurt, but kurt at shirog means short story. Okay, roman means novel. Saddest heart or the saddest heart. I think in English you need to add uh, infinitive articles, you know, uh, but in Korean you don't have to. Uh, the saddest heart, khamnaktrin dil kham, means sadness. We have other words for sadness as well. Khamnak, kham means sadness. Khamnak, still it means sadness. Khamnaktrin, uh, khamnaktrin means the saddest heart means dil. So the saddest heart means khamnaktrin dil. The bravest heart, it means, in Kurdish means behestrin dil or azatrin dil. The happiest man, Shadumantrin Piao, we have many words to be to, for happiness, and I will talk about it in the list. You can say Dilkhoshtrin Piao, Shatrin Piao, Shadumantrin Piao, Kamarantrin Piao. As I said there, Kamaran means happy man or happy woman. Strongest girl means Taunatrin uh, Fitz. Well, Chao means I. I, you know, in on your face, I. Chao, chao na tiris. Tiris means to be afraid. Na tiris means not to be afraid. Chao na tiris means someone who his or her eye doesn't see frightened, 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 frightening. So chao na tiris means someone who doesn't scare of anything and very strong. So chao na tiris. Uh, Natiris and you add Tirin, Kitch means the strongest girl. And uh, I mean this woman. This woman is Khanzadi Soran, means Khanzad of Soran. If it's in French, just like Leonardo da Vinci, Khanzad, uh, Soran du Khanzad, you know. Uh, she was uh, a Kurdish female queen, queen of uh, or the princess of Soran. Soran was one of the Kurdish kingdoms. Uh, he was very strong and good warrior and very great queen for uh, for her, her people. There is a story they talk about that uh, one, you know, every night. I mean, there is a story like that, uh, but I think it's based from the truth. Uh, it says that she was... Uh, by the way, her castle are still there. Anyway, uh, it says that one day she, you know, every night, most of the night, with her uh, guards, she was walking in, in the city and she was listening to people's homes. You know, at that time, houses wasn't that strong. It was just made of a very, uh, you know, poor elements. So that's why she could hear very clearly. So... She was like sneaking out and uh, listening to people without they knowing, uh, without let them knowing, and to see what do people think of her government and what do people need and etc. So one night uh, she hears, she listens to a house. A man says, "I don't know to himself or to someone." Oh my God! It, like the man says, "Oh my God! She is the best queen ever, and I wish I could marry her." Uh, and for the next day, uh, the guards go to the man and they take him to the castle. So the man freaks out and they don't know, you know, what's happening. So, uh, and uh, the queen, you know, Khan Zadiswan says, uh, I want to marry you, you know, as you wished. And they're going to get married. I mean, uh, this is the story. It's a little bit unbelievable, but I, I think it's... Uh, uh, a historical heaven happened. Anyway, we still uh, love her. She was a good queen. And last sentence, Bashtrin Honeri Afret. Honer means poet. There is another word, Sha'ir, which is the Arabic word, but in Kurdish books, and now people are getting used to it, they use Honer. Honer means poet. Honrawa means uh, poem. So, Bashtrim Honeri Afred means uh, the best woman poet. The best woman poet. Uh, and here we have another poet here. Uh, her name was Khanzadi Soran. And she is uh, one of the first um, 
Middle Eastern historian woman. Uh, she wrote about Ardalan. Ardalan kingdom was a kingdom in Kurdish in Iran, in Kurdistan, Iran. Her, her poems are in Kurdish. You, I think he wrote in Arabic, Kurdish, and Persian language as well. He wrote uh, many nice poems. I have one of his books and his manuscript. Her, sorry, her, not his, oh my god, her, her manuscript. And uh, she is really great uh, writer. And she had, uh, she wrote poem to her husband. Her husband died young. Uh, she Basically, she was also queen because her husband was uh, king of Erdogan. And uh, with her husband, they wrote letters, you know, poetic letters to each other. And uh, yeah, so, you know, she had, uh, uh, she heard about a very famous uh, smart man comes to, the, I, I forgot her, uh, the name of that man, but he was also an Islamic preacher. So uh, she said that, okay, I want to go and uh, see her because, you know, she loved science and stuff like that. She loved science a lot. So. She goes to the man and and just taking a look at the man and the man said, "Come on, be shameful! How women should take a look at a woman like that?" And uh, she answered him, uh, "You know, Adam was made of, uh, you know, uh, made of, uh, oh my God, made of not dirt, made of earth. So and and Eve was made of uh, one of his bones." So that's why women are made to 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 look uh, to look at men. And the guy was very surprised that a woman answers like this. So uh, later he becomes her teacher and teach her uh, about philosophy and uh, yeah uh, and Islamic uh, ideology. But she is a she was a great woman actually, uh, and I love her poems. Uh, it's very. Uh, I mean, it's written in Kurdish rhythm and Kurdish uh, rhyme. Anyway, now let's get into our list of adjectives. It was just some cultural notes, and you can know some brave women in, uh, in Kurdistan. I'm really proud of women. Uh, okay, list of adjectives. Uh, different jiawas or juda. Uh, Juda, actually, you know, let me tell you a fun fact. Uh, Juda is also used in in uh, Indian language, in Hindi, in Hindustani. So uh, there was a girl called Juda. Uh, no, 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 Juda was the man, I think. No, no, no. Juda was a, a girl married to, uh, she was Hindu, but she a Hindu pr princess, and she married... A Muslim, a Muslim Mughal, which came to invade uh, India, and her name, his name was Akbar, and then they fell in love, and uh, peace comes to India. There is a, a famous Indian movie about that, uh, so I'm going to put the link of the movie in the description, and I'm going to put the story in the description as well from Wikipedia. So you can read about Judah Akbar. Judah is the name of the girl, Akbar is the name of the king of Mughal. But anyway... Uh, Jiawas means different. Juda means also means different. So Jiawas, you can say Jiawas, Jiawas Tir, Jiawas Trin, Juda, Juda Tir, Juda Trin. Important in Kurdish, you can say Gring. Gring is the Kurdish word. Gring. Mm, you can you can pronounce it as nasal or pronounce N and G as well. So Gring or Gring. Okay. So Gring or you can pronounce the N nasal and then pronounce G as well. It's all three ways possible are possible. The so, gring, uh, muhim, uh, it came from the Arabic word. You also can say that. So, gring, gring, tir, gring, trin, muhim, muhim, tir, muhim, trin. You can reply. Okay, I'm not going to say all the forms of the adjectives when I explain them because they have the same rule. For comparative, you add tir, and for uh, superlative, you add trin. Popular, bow. Bow means something's popular nowadays or common between people. Barbalo uh, means something is spread. Uh, Banalbang means famous. Basically, Banalbang means famous, but you also can use it for popular. Uh, known, Nasrao or Zanrao. Zanrao is came from the, the verb Zanin, which basically means to know. So Zanrao means something is known. Nasrao means some, some, something or someone is famous or common. Difficult, Gran. Gran can also means uh, hard. Then Quris. Quris means uh, something is difficult uh, to lift up. But it also can be used for other things. For example, 
خواندن قرص means studying is hard for example زحمت زحمت yeah دجوار سخت this all can mean difficult United یک گرتو یک گرتو یک گرتو یک گرتو خود گرم useful بسود or سودبخش بکالک these these words all mean useful scared sacred sorry sorry not not scared what it's sacred sacred or holy can means piros in Kurdish piros piros also can mean congratulations for example I say piros bit means congratulations or I basically like literally I mean holiness be upon you or something like that old con here basala so let me explain this con means something is old you cannot use this word for human or for man but peer means an older older man okay peer emerd means old man peer peer means older woman very old means ah, like 50 to to go up even upper like 70s or 50s 60s or 70s they are all pyramid and pyramid basalachu uh, it can be used for either men or women when they are very old as well uh, healthy tandrust or sag sag the s is a little bit strong and we have g at the end sag strong is behes aza batwana batwana means someone who is able to do things Successful, Sarkoutou, expensive, gram. Look, gram can also mean expensive, can also mean something is has a lot of weight, wet, or some or something is difficult. They it have all of these meanings. By the way, I put some Chinese characters in the oh my god, and the uh, n names of <laughs> okay Chinese zodiacs because I, I I didn't know what should I put here. You know what kind of picture? I didn't find any picture, and I. And I was tired, you know, writing all of these things and stuff. So I didn't want to, I just, I found this image and I just put it. But basically it, it makes sense. For example, the zodiacs will tell you uh, this uh, zodiac sign is more happier than that and stuff like that. So you get the point, okay? But you know, zodiacs are bullshit, by the way. Um, okay, so happy, dulhosh. Dul, it's basically from the word dul, which means heart. Hosh means nice or tasty or delicious so dulkhosh means happy to be happy shaduman is the same shad is the same bakhtawar uh, bakhtawar also means happy there is a lot of words uh, responsible berpersiar berpersiar uh, pur hajar hajar j this is not j here j j okay hajar pur Pure, uh, poor, poor, uh, poor means hajar when someone doesn't have money. This poor means pucht. Okay, something is pure. Uh, pucht. Uh, nu uh, in Kurdish is nue, nue, or you also nue or taza, taza. Uh, that is an an inspirated, just like uh, uh, t without h. You know when t comes with h in Vietnamese language, it's aspirated. When it doesn't come with H, it's aspirated. And this T in this position is aspirated. Taza, 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 It's taza, taza. It's not very aspirated. Nice can mean juan or ruhosh. Ruhosh, basically ru, this is a strong R. Ru means face. Okay, face has another word, the muchao, but ru also means face. Hosh. As a, you know, I think we took this word a lot of time, so you know the meaning. So ruhoj uh, is someone, someone's face is nice and always kind, you know, a kind face. So basically, it means nice, beautiful. Uh, there is a lot of words for beautiful as well. For example, for example, juan, kashang, uh, etc. There's other uh, other words as well. Kashang um, is also used in Persian, I think. Aware, agadar, hushyar, hushyar. Uh, in, in Kurdistan of uh, Eastern Kurdistan, uh, sorry, Western Western Kurdistan, 
uh, no, no, sorry, Eastern Kurdistan or Rojava, they also have this name, Shiar. Shiar is also a name and also can mean aware. Uh, so uh, I have a friend, Her his name is Shiar. Uh, famous, Banaubang, Naudar, or Nasrao. Uh, now means name. Dar means someone have a name. Someone has a name, sorry. Someone has a name means someone is famous. Hungry, Birsi, or Nosin. Nosin actually is a funny word that a man which is really like to eat a lot. It, it doesn't mean ang hungry, by the way. It doesn't mean hungry, but uh, a man who wants to eat all the time and love uh, and loves food uh, a lot you know the, the uh there is a, a tv show called man versus food that man is no sin basically means uh that man is really low food and just want to eat a lot and yeah so this is no sin then we have suitable suitable gunjao or labar uh foreign biani stranger begana Pract Begana can also be used for foreign or foreigner as well. Uh, there is another word for stranger, Namo, which is name of my sister, and also means stranger. Practical means Kirdari. Cultural, Tulturi. Careful, Wiria. Acceptable, Pasant Krau. Pasant can mean accept as well. Pasant Kirdin means to accept. Kabul Krau, but Kabul is from Arabic, but we make the ill be strong. Civil is uh, civil. In Kurdish we say civil, uh, sharistani or madani. Madani is from Arabic. Angry, tura, tura. It's a strong R. Tura means angry. There is other words as well. Lucky, khoshbakht, babakht. Khosh, you know the word. Bakht means luck. So khoshbakht means someone is lucky. Someone has a delicious luck. It's something like that. Babakhit means someone has luck. Bashans, uh, chance can also mean luck, but I think it's from English, yeah, chance. Uh, ugly, nashirin, uh, razagran. Razakan means, okay, it means razagran. I don't, uh, gran means uh, something is uh, uh, difficult or hard. Uh, so raza, I think raza uh, can also mean face, but uh, you know, it means face, but it's used as uh, prefixes. It doesn't use as uh, uh, a dependent word, I think. I think, okay? I think. Because we have another word like and stuff like that. So uh, it, it's associated with face somehow. Um, but Raza is also a name, I think. Anyway, tired is Mandu, Hilag, but Hilag is from Arabic. Shaket. Uh, I, I'm not sure where is Shaket. I think probably it's from Arabic as well. Or I don't think so. Shaket from Arabic. It's not from, it's Kurdish, I think, or Persian. But tired, you also sometimes you say Mandu Shaket. So, you know, sometimes in Kurdish we we put two words together and we combine them with Wu. For example, I say Min Mandu Shaket. It means I am tired and or I'm very tired. That's why I use both with each other. Or I am tired and exhausted. Shaket can mean exhausted as well. Uh, okay, our last list: weak lawas. The, probably there's other way uh, word for it as well. Asleep khawalu means someone is still in sleeping. Guilty tawanbar or gunahbar. Gunahbar can also mean sinful, but you also can use it for someone who who is guilty. I mean, not just spiritually, but spiritually gunahbar is used. But gunahbar gunahbar is also used. Uh, for someone. Tawan bad is guilty. Tawan kar. We also have this word tawan kar as well. Tawan means um, guilt. Okay. Uh, bad means situation. So tawan bad is someone who is in the guiltiness situation. Something like that. Okay. This is how you explain Kurdish morphology. Uh, lonely, tanya or tanha. Tanha can, can, can also mean only. Okay. Bekes uh, can also mean lonely. Bekes basically kes means person. If you remember, we talked about that in, in this lesson. And be is uh, basically a suffix. You add two words to, to make a uh, negative meaning. For example, kas means person. Bekas means no kas or no one. So uh, someone doesn't have. Be means this thing doesn't have. Be means doesn't have. So bekas means doesn't have no one, doesn't have person. So means lonely. 
tall means dresh, short, kurt, uh, small, bichuk, gichka, chikola, tiny, bichuk, bichkola. They all can mean the same, okay? Small and tiny, you can use these words for each other. First, yakam. For example, uh, you can say yakamina. Sometimes in some Kurdish words, I don't know why, but you can say yakamtrina, you know? Yakamtrina, but in rapid speech, uh, in some words, we say yakamin. We omit t in the superlative for your information. Uh, yakamin means the first one or the most first one, something like that. Um, the number one, you know. Three azat, serbest, uh, azat. Uh, serbest. Uh, this too means free, but it, it's about you know politically free or something related to your right. But when you say something is free, which means no charge when you don't pay anything, balash or bebaramber. Okay, it means it's free. You can say, for example, you can eat for free. Uh, but when you say I want to be free from this prison, then you use azad or serbest. But uh, balash or bebaramber uh, means, you know, when you want to buy something, but the man says, hey, it's free, don't give me money or something. Ancient or ancient is kon, derin, peshin. Derin and peshin can be used uh, very well. Uh, ancestor or ancestral, there is a word uh, that related to peshin as well. Peshin akan man means our uh, ancestor. Anyway, uh, natural, srushti, uh, true, rast, or drus. Drus can also mean right. I mean, not the right side or as a direction, but as you say, you know, uh, oh my God, I am very handsome. And someone says, oh, oh right, right, you know. Sorry, I have to explain. Anyway, and uh, yeah, these girls are not weak. Oh my God, not guilty. No, 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 no. Free. Okay. And natural and uh, true as well, let's say true as well, and they are brave as well. Brave, brave can also mean chaunatiris, means brave, chaunatiris. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the end of our lesson. I know it's a very long lesson, but it's very important for you guys. Uh, you just need to watch 30 minutes in, in order to understand about the grammatical thing, but if you want to go more and, yeah, uh, so have a nice day everyone and next lesson I'm going to talk about verbs and conjugations I think it's going to be a long lesson as well in our next lesson and if you want to see another list of not adjective but this time in next lesson I can make a list of verbs in Kurdish anyway have a nice day everyone and until next lesson see you soon